everyone and I am so incredibly excited to be bringing you this video because this is introducing my Etsy shop. I wanted to film this video just to give you guys a little insight into what I will be selling on Etsy and the inspiration of why I created these illustrations and these prints. So. As you guys know, or if you don't know, I am an illustration student. I am going into my senior year as an illustration major and I'm minoring in art history and writing. At FIT in New York City, which is the Fashion Institute of Technology, it is a wonderful school and the fact that I am going into my senior year is a bit bizarre. But this is my first step into actually selling my prints. What's so wonderful about this community is that I have gained so many incredible friends, friends in you. So thank you so much for watching my videos and being so supportive and following what I am doing. I am not only an artist and an illustrator, but I, as you guys know from this channel, I am a very, very avid reader and this is my way of having books and pictures, or in this case illustrations, unite because to combine my two loves of art and reading is just my dream and my goal in life. I do aspire to be some kind of book designer or be in the book design industry. I am so excited to be opening this Etsy shop and I hope you guys are excited as well. So I just wanted to get into what I would be selling and the books that inspired me and also the authors that inspired me to start this project. I originally started this on-the-page author portrait project for one of my illustration classes a few semesters ago at my college and my university, and basically we had to make a pamphlet which is kind of like an illustrator's business card because to display some of your artwork in a more interesting way besides just handing someone a business card. So we made these accordion pamphlets and we had to make four of them that goes on one sheet of paper and the way that you fold it there are four different illustrations. So I had an idea of maybe doing four different authors that I really love and then we had to do a traditional illustration into digital illustration. So I had the idea of drawing these author portraits with graphite pencil because I really love when things look a bit aged and they look a bit vintage and I thought graphite was the perfect way to kind of make that really beautiful sketchy texture and so I did the sketches and then taking it into digital now because that's what my professor wanted. He wanted half traditional and half digital. You could either start digital and go traditional or I did as I started traditional and brought it in digitally to Photoshop. And what I did was I overlaid the text, the title page and the first page, well just for that project, the title page of the author's books. So I decided to call the project On the Page because it is the author's portrait on the page of their own books. And I have always wanted to draw right into my own books, but I've always felt a little nervous about that because even though I am, I'm a seasoned artist, I have been drawing my entire life, I just still feel a little nervous about actually drawing in my own books because they are my precious children. So this is my way of kind of taking the first step into maybe one day I will be drawing these actually in my books. But for now, it has the illusion of being drawn in a book just by using brush techniques on Photoshop. So then this kind of took its own turn and spun into a big passion project for me where I did my favorite authors and I put them on the page of their books. And so I have been posting about it for a while and you guys have given me such wonderful responses and messages and I really started thinking about opening up my own Etsy shop. Um, for years and years, my family, who I have a very big family, they have always told me that I should open up an Etsy and I should start selling my artwork, but I never really knew how, I never really know, knew which way would be the right way, and now I am finally taking the step to opening up my own Etsy shop. So very excited, very nervous. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be selling four of my on-the-page author portraits. I do plan on selling more than just four authors, but to start out right now, I picked four authors that really speak to who I am, and I think authors that we all can agree we love very, very much. And I want to talk a little bit about, to make it more booktube-ish and not just talking about my Etsy shop, I wanted to give you guys a little background into why these books and these authors were chosen and what they mean to me. So 
Just to talk a little bit about the actual prints themselves, I will start with the first book and the first author that I will be talking about, and that is Charlotte Bronte, who is on the page of Jane Eyre, probably her most famous work. She is also very well known for Shirley and Villette, but I think Jane Eyre is probably the book that she's most known for. And so this is the title page of Jane Eyre, and then this is the first page of Jane Eyre. And what I did was I took the eraser tool on Photoshop and I took away the words I thought where it was kind of making her pop and come off of the page. I took the eraser just where there were some white areas just to really bring some three dimension to the actual piece. So these prints I have ordered from a really wonderful company who are not sponsoring this video. I wish they were but they are called Moo, M -O -O com, and they are just a really really wonderful online printing company. We had a guest speaker come to FIT during one of my classes and he brought these amazing postcards and we asked them where he got them from and he got them from this website site called Moo and when I was thinking about who I wanted to have them be printed by I thought of that company and I was like you know what might as well try them my first go around and I really 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 love how they came out I was a bit nervous of the quality and the paper type because again I have never used this company before but the paper quality is amazing it is just what I was looking for I I selected, you can either do a glossy or a matte finish. I selected the matte finish just because I think it gives it more of a higher quality and elegant look. It just makes it look a bit nicer in my opinion. So yes, these aren't shiny, they are just a bit glossy and matte. They have a really nice smooth finish and the paper is really great. You really can't bend these very very easily. You can, obviously they have a little give, but they are really nice quality and that's what I wanted for you guys. I didn't want to get you, um, get you, I didn't want to provide you with any uh, low quality item or anything like that. I think you know what I mean. They are four inches by six inches and I will put the centimeters right here. Unfortunately, me being American, I know the metric system is a bit confusing. <laughs> So they are four inches by six inches, which basically is like the standard size of a regular postcard, just to give you guys an idea of sizing. And like I said, they're on really nice matte paper. And I just love how they printed. The coloration is perfect. And they just, they make me really happy. And I really hope that they make you happy as well. Just the quality in general, I was a bit nervous about, but they came out exactly the way that I wanted them to. And so yes, my intention for these are they can be used as prints where you can frame or display however you want on your wall or anywhere you want in your house. You, again, don't have to buy them. Like, I feel a little funny making this video and promoting my stuff because, again, like, no one is required to buy anything. This is just a little introduction into my Etsy shop and my products. So. I am trying to promote them in a way, but please don't feel like you have to buy them. This is just my way of telling you about the projects that I'm working on, which I know you guys do enjoy me talking about. So yes, again, please don't feel like you have to buy anything. I am just so honored that you watch my videos and that you support everything that I do and for your kindness. So yeah, okay. Um, but yes, yeah, so you can display these however you want. I also was thinking that you can use them as very wide bookmarks. I know that I tend to use postcards when I read along with using regular size bookmarks and I think that they just make a very nice and sturdy bookmark using something that's a bit wider. So yes, you can use them as regular prints like that you can frame or you can use them as bookmarks. So I will just show you guys the different um, size comparisons a little later in this video. But yes, okay, so I think that's all the information you really need to know about sizing and quality and everything. I want to start talking about the book that inspired my creation of putting Charlotte Bronte on the page of Jane Eyre. So I'm going to put this down and I will pick up Jane Eyre. I am going to show you guys just size comparison. So this is the World Cloud Classics of Jane Eyre. This is the edition that I first read the book from and it has my original tabs right in it and I did go through and <laughs> put some little, uh, oh, <laughs> this 
part says it's getting juicy. Um, yeah, I put some of my annotations in here. This exact edition was actually a gift from my mom, so this has a very, very special place in my heart because it is the edition that I first read the book from, and this is the book that really got me into reading classics, or at least into reading bigger classics, because I've always been a fan of different children's classics, but Jane Eyre, I think, was a bit daunting for me, and it kind of gave me the push that, wow, I really, really love this, I want to try reading more classics, and so this book just really means the absolute world to me. And what I want to show you guys is just, again, size comparison. So it is smaller, as you can see, than the book itself, which is always nice, because bookmarks shouldn't be bigger than the books. Um, they can be, but usually they aren't. So I'm just going to show you guys what it looks like if you put it here. We'll do this one. Okay, so if you just put it in the book like this, then it just goes out of the cover like that. So again, pretty wide for a bookmark, but I think they look kind of nice. And I was joking about this in my Instagram stories the other day, but you can have their head sticking out. <laughs> Hello, Charlotte. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I will put this back down and I will talk a little bit about my love for Jane Eyre. Yeah, so I read Jane Eyre probably two years ago, I would say, and that was really, like I said, when my, when my love and um, obsession with classics really started. I read this, I believe, over the summer? I don't remember exactly when. It's on my Goodreads. I will link my Goodreads and my social social media down below as always, but yes, I I remember reading this book because I was watching Anne with an E on Netflix and I read Anne of Green Gables and I loved it and I read Anne, uh, watched Anne with an E and there were references to Jane Eyre, the book on Anne with an E, the show, and it really sparked my interest in reading the book because I had it on my shelves and I was always very nervous to read it and then Anne Shirley on and with an E was talking about her love of Jane Eyre and she even recited some quotes from from the book and it really really made me go you know what I'm gonna do it I'm gonna pick it up no matter whether I'm scared of reading it or not I am going to pick up Jane Eyre and that was probably one of the best decisions of my life because it has now turned me into the reader and the classics lover that I am today and I wouldn't be here or at least it wouldn't be this kind of booktuber without this book. I know a lot of you guys appreciate the fact that I really talk about and honor the classics because I think that they deserve so much more love than they receive and they are just, they are classics for a reason. I think a lot of people say that, I always say that, that they stand the test of time for a reason, and that is because they are incredible books that have so much to say, especially because most of them are quite large, so they have quite a lot to say. <laughs> um, so yes, Jane Eyre means the world to me. Thank you so much, Charlotte Bronte. So this is my little ode and love letter to Jane Eyre and to Charlotte Bronte. Someone said to me, I forget who it was, someone said to me that if the authors were alive today and they saw what I was doing, I think they would be really happy, and that that made me, like, shed a few tears because these authors mean so much to me, and all I want in the world is to be able to tell them how much they mean to me, and show them how their books are living on and their words are living on, and I am just so inspired by them and I think so many of us are and we are the readers that we are because of these books and because they exist and I just can't imagine my life without reading Jane Eyre especially. So yes, a little dramatic but you know, that's that's the truth. <laughs> imagine, imagine if they were alive today, do you think they would watch booktube? I kind of feel like they would. Anyway, so that is my little ode to Charlotte Bronte. Now we will talk about the next author that I will be doing a postcard for. Now, the next author is very, very, very close to my heart, just like Charlotte Bronte, and I think you guys know this. You are not surprised that I talk about this author so much and that he is part of this he just means so much to me. And that is Walt Whitman. I love Walt Whitman. I talk about him quite a lot. And I 
you guys might have seen on my Instagram, and I think I put it on my YouTube already, my wall that I put in my reading room. I just put up a, a really, really big frame wall on one of my walls in this room, and most of them are postcards from the Walt Whitman birthplace on Long Island. Walter Whitman was actually born and you can go and you can visit his house and you can go and get a tour and the crazy thing was I was in the room that he was in when he was a baby and so when we were there we had a very older a really nice older gentleman who was giving us the tour and he was saying that we are standing on the floors that Walt Whitman probably walked barefoot on as the as a toddler and that just blew my mind and made me want to like break down in tears because the fact that I I live in a place that has so much history and so much history involving one of my favorite poets it's just mind blowing to think about that way and also my favorite movie on the face of the earth is Dead Poet Society and that movie also really um, grew and spark, sparked my love for Walt Whitman because they recite and they talk a lot about Walt Whitman or as Mr. Keating likes to call him, Uncle Walt, which, you know, I love me, Uncle Walt. <laughs> so yes, this is Walt Whitman on the cover of Leaves of Grass, his famous poetry collection, and then the other cover, or the other side, I didn't put the first page of the poetry collection because I think whatever collection you get, there is obviously going to be a different poem on the first page, unlike the first page of a novel. So I just decided to put my favorite poem on the other side of this postcard, and that is the poem, Oh Me, Oh Life. And talking about Dead Poet Society, this poem in particular has a very big scene, not a very big scene, but a very powerful scene where our main character, the teacher in Dead Poet Society, Mr. Keating, recites this poem to the boys. And at the end, it's asking about what will your verse be? What will you provide and what will you bring to your life? What will be your legacy? That's what Mr. Keating is asking of them is, you know, what are you going to leave behind? And what's amazing is that as Walt Whitman is asking the reader this, he is giving us and showing us and we are reading from his legacy, from his verse and from his verses because there are more than one. And so I just feel so incredibly inspired by Walt Whitman as a poet, as a man, and he is just an incredible person. I love learning more and more about him. He had an, a wonderful life. He is also a naturalist, or was a naturalist, and me being a lover of the great outdoors and being a lover of nature, I feel like I do have this, this slight bond on that level as well with him. So he just means the absolute world to me. So yes, this is my piece for Walt Whitman. This was my first collection of Walt Whitman poems. This book is so, so special to me, like Jane Eyre, because I actually came upon this book by accident, or at least not looking for it. My mom and I love going to different thrift shops and antique shops because we both love finding pieces from history and she really loves collecting different types of glasses and china and she loves milk glass, she loves um, vases or vases, and so her and I love going to antique shops. And we went to this one antique shop and it was very unique because just, it, I think it was a house that they turned into an, into an antique shop and it was basically just a regular house but on the inside it was filled with like different, different antique items and it was really, really cool. I went into this one area, it like forked a million different directions and so you would go up this one area and you could either go straight and up the stairs or you could go left down the stairs and there was a little room and in this little room there were piles of books and at that time, I got this quite a few years ago, at that time I wasn't a huge reader, I was watching booktube but I wasn't making videos and I was reading but not as much as I read now and I found this book, I found this edition, and it is absolutely beautiful. Um, so it says Selections from Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman, so this isn't the entire collection. It is quite small, but you guys can kind of see that the 
the spine is sort of damaged and broken. I try not to touch this copy too much because I just want it to stay in its somewhat together condition. So on the spine, it just says, again, selections from Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. Something that I love is when there are other author portraits actually in the books like this because I love my author portraits but I love even more when you can see different different author portraits. I actually have this exact photograph on my frame wall. <laughs> this book just means the world to me because this is the first poetry collection of Walt Whitman's that I ever bought and this is the book that really sparked my love for Walt Whitman. So just to give you a little size comparison, I will first show you guys the size comparison with this book. So as you can see, the book itself is the slightest bit wider than the postcard, but I mean, I would still I would still use it, I think. Yes, so it like just goes right up to the edge of the pages, so it is like the exact width of the pages themselves, which is, you know, very funny, the fact that I did it that close to the edge. It's like perfect. <laughs> so yes, you can still use this as a bookmark for the um, smaller editions. If you guys have these, then you know the size comparison, but I just want to show you guys what they would look like in different books. These are the Everyman's Library Pocket Poets, and I'll just show you. Here we go. Yeah, so that's just what it looks like coming out of the top. <laughs> Again, very wide. You don't have to use them as bookmarks, but I just thought that they would make, they would make nice bookmarks. And then I will show you size comparison with this book. This book is like a tip typical paperback, maybe a teeny bit bigger, but that is what it looks like, and then if you put it inside, that's what it looks like coming out. So this fits really nicely in this size. Really love that. And then, like I did before, you could have, have Walt popping out. <laughs> he wants to say hello. <laughs> yeah, so that's just a little size comparison for you guys. But I think they look pretty nice as the bookmarks for, for this size book. I think they work for little books too, but you know what I mean. <laughs> now the next author is more of a new to me author. I read a story by him in December. I think you guys might be able to guess who it is. And then I read his first full novel a few months ago this year. And he has become one of my new all-time favorite authors just from reading one book and one story by him. He is a genius, and he is also the biggest inspiration for one of my other favorite authors, the fourth author and the last author, but the author that is second to last, that inspired that last author, is Charles Dickens. I love Charles Dickens. He is, I think, a literary genius. He is so witty and so funny, and he brings so much to his books. He is so smart and just clever. He's such a clever man. When I read A Christmas Carol and when I read Great Expectations, which is what he is on the page of, I actually read from this copy of Great Expectations, but when I read Great Expectations, the entire time I was just thinking, this is brilliant. He is so clever. He is so smart. And what an incredible story. The whole time I was reading it, and I was always very daunted by Charles Dickens because his books are so well-known, so well-loved. He has his own term like Shakespearean, he's Dickensian, and he just has this whole fan club, I guess. I feel like so many people, especially on booktube, love Charles Dickens, and for good reason now that I understand why, is he is just so incredible and so smart, and he has such a wonderful face. Like, when I was drawing this, um, what's great about being an artist is you can really see the details and the little intricacies about a person's face. And while I was drawing this, I was just like, I really like his face. He has a really interesting face. Same with the Edgar Allan Poe, which I also did another author on the page portrait of. He will be available maybe in the in the future. I hope in the future. It really depends on how well these sell, then I can introduce more authors for you guys. But to start out, I just wanted to do four. Later along the, down the line, I will introduce and be printing more authors, not just these four, just to put that in there. But yeah, I just really loved his face. I love his beard. His beard is so strange, but in a very 
wonderful way. I really like it. I think it's just so Charles Dickens. It's so iconic as him. And I really, really love how this one came out. I actually have the original sketch on my wall, and I have my Tolstoy sketch and my um, Charlotte Bronte sketch on my wall. I don't have my Walt Whitman sketch, but that is because I have so many other postcards of Walt Whitman on my wall that I'm thinking I might switch one of them out either for my original Walt Whitman sketch or my Walt Whitman postcard. So my own Walt Whitman postcard, not just photograph postcards. Anyway, Charles Dickens. <laughs> Uh, I just absolutely love him and had to have him on the page of Great Expectations because that is the first full novel that I read by him besides A Christmas Carol, which I read first for the Christmas season. Um, and I absolutely love, love how it came out, love him, and let's talk about Great Expectations. Now, this copy is a mass market paperback and as I said before, you know, <laughs> as a bookmark. It is like the same exact size so it doesn't work perfectly for mass market paperbacks but I still think they look kind of charming so I will <laughs> show you guys what it looks like if you put it inside the actual mass market so as you can see it goes like right to the edge but I mean I still think it works it you know very wide bookmark but <laughs> I think it's cute and then like I did before we can have him popping out and saying hello. Hello, Charles. Hello. <laughs> so yes, I really, really love how it looks. I think it looks kind of funny in the mass markets. Anyway, let's talk about Great Expectations, the book. Like I said before, I read this book this year and it completely captured my heart and made me fall in love with Charles Dickens as a writer. This book is just a work of genius and as you can see, I did so many tabs. I will take this out for now, but as you can see, I put so many tabs in the pages. There are so many underlines and scribbles in the book, and I just really, really tore this exact edition apart. I bent the pages, cracked the spines, because I loved it so much, and that's what I love about a really well-used and well-loved book, is you can tell how much it wasn't just a reader reading, it was a reader experiencing. It was a reader really delving deep and and just enjoying everything that the book has to offer. Um, my pages are a little bit bent, like the cover is a little bit bent. I just love it because obviously, like for my cloth bounds, if I bent the cover, I would be very, very upset. <laughs> but what I love about the mass market paperbacks and getting more of a dingy, or this copy was used when I bought it, but getting a used copy for your first read to really annotate and delve deep and really, you know, pick it apart. That's what I love about um, having a specific edition just to really make it a well-loved copy as you read it, make it a full annotation experience, and that is what this exact copy is for me. I will put the postcard or bookmark right back in just so it can be there. I'll have his forehead sticking out with, it says Charles Dickens right there. <laughs> um, so yes, I love this book and I can't wait to read my next Charles Dickens. He inspired my last author that I will be talking about and the author that wrote the book that changed my life, kind of. It's the book that is my favorite book of this year and we will talk about that in a minute, but yes. Charles Dickens as an author inspired the next author. So without further ado, let's talk about my favorite book of 2020. Now, if you guys have been following my channel for a little while, you would have seen my start of filming reading vlogs. I started filming reading vlogs, I think, back in December, so at the tail end of 2019 into 2020 up until now. I have loved filming reading vlogs and the book that really took over my reading vlogs for the first few weeks was this next book and the author that took over my life and really just uh, changed how I think about writing and how I think about storytelling and how I kind of gauge every other book because I feel like when you have, when you read a book that I think this is the best book I've ever read, the best book 
ever written that I have read. You can't help but compare every other book you read to that one book. And that author is the author that was inspired by Charles Dickens, and that is Leo Tolstoy, who wrote my favorite book on the planet, Anna Karenina. And this is Tolstoy, as you can tell, on the cover of Anna Karenina. So this is, this edition, the title page is actually a printing from New York, but I really love the detail of it. This was actually in that exact edition, this nice detailing right here. And it says, Anna Karenina by Count Leo and Tolstoy in eight parts, translated by Nathan Haskell Dole. And it is printed New York by Thomas Y. Cromwell and & Co. And so I think that's why it has the C, because it stands for Cromwell 13 Astor Place. And on the other side, it is actually the first page of Anna Karenina, but in the original Russian translation. I wanted to make it the original Russian because it was more of an homage and more of an ode to Tolstoy's own original words and own original text because obviously he didn't write it in English, he wrote it in Russian and then it was translated. I wish with all of my heart that I could read Russian because to be able to read Tolstoy's original language and original word choice would be an experience that I cannot even describe. Um, it was an experience that I cannot even describe reading it in English. I can't even imagine reading it in Russian. So I did the original Russian and I really love how this came out. I have, like I said before, I have the original sketch on my wall in my sketchbook just on a little display that I have. It just brings me so much joy to see him. He, I, again, like Charles Dickens, very iconic face. I love his beard. I love just, he, I feel like authors, especially classics authors, have such like interesting lives and you can like tell that they were really, really like deep, thoughtful people. You can kind of see that in how they how they look, how they are. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense or if you know what I mean, but I hope you do. And yeah, so I just absolutely love how this one came out, especially having the Russian. I really am glad that I went with that instead of the English translation. Now, the copy of Anna Karenina that means the absolute world to me is the copy that you have seen many, 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 many times on my channel, and that is this edition. This is the Panda Macmillan Collector's Library Edition. I love these editions. I have many, many, many of them. And it is such a beautiful edition on its own. I didn't annotate this edition because it is very, very beautiful and I didn't want to ruin it. And also the pages are kind of like Bible paper and I didn't want to ruin them or scratch them up or dog ear them just because I wanted to keep this book in somewhat pristine condition even though it is definitely well loved just from that first reading experience but this is the Louise and Almer Maud translation so the Maud translation is the translation that Tolstoy himself actually gave his own stamp of approval on and this is a translation that I think I see I can't say it's superior because I haven't read the other translations but I would definitely read the Ma translation because I think it is absolutely beautiful and what I don't think a lot of people realize about this book is that it is so easy to get through and what's so funny about this book is that you'd think it is over a thousand pages and you would it would probably take you forever and a day to read but once you read the first page you will be hooked you'll be completely and utterly hooked and you won't want to put it down. I love this book with my whole heart. So many of you have decided to read it because of me talking about it in my vlogs and on my channel and that is just the best thing ever. I love the fact that you guys wanted to read it because of me and that's the beauty of booktube is we can share our love for certain books and certain authors and experience things because you heard another person and you wanted to experience that same love. So definitely, definitely read Anna Karenina if it's a book that you have been wanting to read. I love this edition itself because I think it's just so beautiful, but the story itself is probably the best book I have ever read. His writing, even in translation, is 
incredible. If you're scared by it like I was, you can go back and find the videos where I was talking about wanting to read this book and I was petrified. You can tell in the video that I didn't even know if I would actually read it this year. It was my biggest goal to read this book in 2020 and I did it and it has become my favorite book ever. I think the best book ever written. Obviously that is very that is very much an opinion, not a fact. <laughs> so yes, if you want to try to read Anna Karenina, then do it. This is my push to you. I needed the push from you guys. Many of you commented on that video and said, Carolyn, just do it. It's amazing. And I listened to you and I did. And I thank you so much for giving me that push. So if you need the push, here is your push. Read the book. <laughs> to give you a little size comparison as well, again, these are about the size of they're hardcover, but they are the size of mass market paperbacks. They are somewhat pocket sized, but I love the fact that they're pocket sized because they're perfect for traveling. So here is your size comparison. Again, it's about the same exact size as this book itself. Here is just a little look into what it would look like in such a tiny edition. Yeah, this one I definitely wouldn't use even for myself <laughs> as a bookmark because it sticks out quite a lot. Wowza. Rather large. Rather silly. <laughs> so yes, I would definitely um, maybe not use this bookmark for this exact edition, but I would use it for bigger editions. Like, I do have it in cloth bound, and it would fit perfectly in cloth bound. I'll show you guys, actually, just so that you can see. Here it is in the beautiful, stunning, gorgeous cloth bound, and size comparison, shall we? So there it is compared to the size of it, and I will put it right in here. So as you can see, it fits nice, and I think, see, it doesn't look as silly if you put it in a bigger book. <laughs> this is what it looks like. Um, so you guys know if you have any of these copies or if you've seen them ever in stores or on other people's channels, just to give you a little size comparison to what it looks like. So yes, I think it fits much better in a bigger book. <laughs> the Pen um, Pan Macmillans are a bit too small for them. And just to give you one more size comparison, I will show you guys. These are the Penguin English Library books that I love very, very much. I have quite a few of them. You can't see them right now, but they're over here. They're kind of kind of getting cut off. Um, and this is A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens, which I have yet to read, but I think it's going to be my next Dickens novel. And these are, like, the size are traditional paperbacks. So just to give you another size comparison, here is my Charles Dickens postcard bookmark and that is what it looks like compared to the cover and then when you put it inside I'm gonna do it like this. see so I think that it fits a little bit better if they're bigger books um, mass markets and the Macmillan collector's library edition are a bit more on the fence of whether you would want to use it as a bookmark or not but they fit really well in just regular um, sized paperbacks or hardcovers more size comparisons. I'm just trying to give you guys an idea of sizing so that you know. Okay, so here are all four of my prints, just to go through them again because I love them so much. <laughs> we have Tolstoy, and then we have Dickens, and then we have Charlotte Bronte, and then we have Walt Whitman, which they just, I think they go so well together. So yes, I will be having just these four for now in my Etsy shop, but hopefully if they sell really well, then I will be introducing more author portraits. Here are just a few of the other ones that I have done, just to give you a little idea of maybe the authors that I have planned in the future that are already ready. I just have to get them printed. If you guys would like to, I would really, really, really love it if you did leave some suggestions of different authors that you would like me to do. I already did a poll on my Instagram asking you guys other authors that you would like to see, but please feel free to comment down below one or many of the authors that you would like to see me illustrate or be part of this whole Etsy shop. Um, so yes, some of them that are like high on my priority list are Jane Austen, of course, because it's Jane Austen, and Virginia Woolf is another one, Daphne du Maurier is another one, F. Scott Fitzgerald, Emily and Anne Bronte. I would love to have all three sisters. 
Thomas Hardy, Victor Hugo for when I eventually read Les Mis, which hopefully will be soon. So those are just the ones that I am planning on doing, so definitely leave me suggestions down below. I would love, love, love to hear which authors you would like to see, so yes. I just wanted to show you guys a little behind the scenes of my Etsy shop, so I have this really cute box right here, um, and it looks like this. I found this, I forgot what store I found this at, um, but I found this really cute little, looks kind of like a vintage box, and in it, it opens up like this, I have all of the stuff that I'll be using to package my Etsy items. So I have envelopes, these are all the prints right here, I have washi tape back there, I have pens to write you guys letters, so just wanted to give you a little behind the scenes if you guys are curious to see what I plan on doing for packaging and everything, I already cut up quite a few little note cards just to write you guys notes if you make a purchase and just to say an incredible thank you and just for being so supportive. Um, so yes, thank you guys so much just for watching my videos and for being the, the kindest community that I could ask for. So in case you guys are wondering about shipping, I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about it. Instead of having Etsy calculate my shipping for me, I decided to just manually put in the shipping myself. So the shipping basically covers what I would need for stamps and handling and just regular postage just so that it can cover the shipping costs um, to make my process a little bit easier. So you can find all the information about pricing and everything on my Etsy shop. And if you have any questions, then please let me know in a comment. I'll be happy to answer you guys or any concerns, or you can DM me on my Instagram. So yes, I tried not to make shipping too crazy just to really cover the cost of stamps and the cost of handling and everything that goes into making the product. Um, I really hope that you guys are excited about this because I am so incredibly excited about this. And yes, so my shop is officially opened. That is what this video was all about. So if you guys want to um, support me and support my Etsy, then the link will be down below. You can also find me on my Instagram and find all things um, art and books related on my Instagram. Also in the link to in my bio on my Instagram, you can have the link to my Etsy, to my YouTube channel, and to the Rory Gilmore reading list, which is always there and always a part of me. Um, another thing that I did was I did a sketch and an author portrait on the page for some people that aren't technically authors. Like I did one for Mr. Knightley on the page of Emma, and I also did a Rory Gilmore one talking about Rory um, made me think about this. So if you guys are interested in me doing maybe some literary people that aren't necessarily authors on the page of whatever book or piece of text that they are related to or in some kind of relation to. Like I did Rory on the page of her graduation speech from Chilton because it involves books and it involves her as a reader. So yeah, let me know. It doesn't even have to be an author, any kind of literary person, any anyone who has some kind of link to literature or any kind of text, then let me know in a comment down below and I would be happy to provide you guys with these postcards and these illustrations. It makes me so incredibly happy to be in a position to be able to send out my art to you guys so that it can have a new home. The fact that I will be able to share my artwork with you guys and to give it a new home and to kind of connect us with each other. I feel like it's very special that I have the postcards and eventually if you order one, you will have one as well. So it's something like that I touched that you will eventually touch. It, I feel like it just connects us on a different level. Um, some of my close friends, like my friend Teresa, who lives all the way in Germany, we have never met, but we have been friends for quite a while now, and this past Christmas, we each wrapped up a few books for each other, and we sent each other Christmas gifts, and when I opened it, I even filmed myself opening it in a reading vlog, and while I was opening it, I was thinking, like, she touched this, like, 
the way that she wrapped it, she wrapped it in this really beautiful um, paper that had stars all over it. I was thinking, like, her hands physically touched this, and now my hands are physically touching this. It just really made me so incredibly happy and made me feel like we had that other, like, physical connection. That's the one bad thing, or not, not even a bad thing, but that's the thing about technology and about YouTube is that I don't really interact with you guys on that level and so to be able to physically wrap each thing myself and be able to send it to you guys just fills my heart with joy. I, I'm definitely rambling now. I can't even imagine how long this video is. So I'm going to end it here. If you guys have any, any, any questions at all, please feel free to ask me. Please feel free to contact me, whether messaging me on Etsy, messaging me on here, messaging me on Instagram. I am hopefully always available to you guys. Sometimes I might not be available. I might be doing something or in the shower or cooking dinner or being a human. But <laughs> so yes, let me know if you have any questions and I'll be happy to answer them. I'm going to include just a few little clips at the end of this video just to give you guys a little, a little snippet of more of my postcards. So yes, I hope you guys are having an amazing, amazing day and are excited that my Etsy shop is open. I'm excited my Etsy shop is open and it feels very surreal to me. So yes, okay, I'm going to leave you guys here. I hope you are happy and healthy and having an amazing, amazing day and reading wonderful, wonderful books. And I will see you guys soon in another video. Happy reading!